hello friends welcome to assist biology in this video we will discuss about reproduction in organism from this chapter we will see the introduction and we will see about a sexual reproduction before starting this video let me introduce myself i am assist kumar das a student of msc in animal biology in university of hyderabad if you are new to this channel please subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for getting more updates ओके बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस वीडियो लेट अस डिस्कस व्हाट वी लर्न टुडे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी व्हाट इज रिप्रोडक्शन वी विल डिफाइन रिप्रोडक्शन एंड वी विल सी इट्स सिग्निफिकेंस सो व्हाट इज इट इज नेसेसरी देन वी विल सी अबाउट लाइफ स्पैन एंड इट्स वेरिएशन हाउ इट वेरी इन डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनिज्म देन वी विल सी व्हाट आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन एंड वी विल एलाबोरेटली डिस्कस ए सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन अलोंग विथ इट्स वेरियस मोड्स so let's get started first of all what is reproduction it is composed of two words that is re re means again and production means creation of new that's why reproduction means production of new organism or individual from the existing individual okay and why this is necessary this is necessary because it is essential for the continuation of a species for example every organism will die after certain stage of life and if they were not reproducing and they are not producing new individual then a time will come there will be no individual left of that species in earth that's why it will lead to extinction that's why reproduction is necessary for the continuation of a species okay and what is species as we know species means they are group of organism which are genetically distinct and reproductively isolated that's why the reproduction can only be between the two organism of a same species this is one important thing now what is life span okay life span is the period from birth to the natural death of a species okay life span is the period from birth to natural death of a species for example if an organism is dying accidentally or by other means then the time period will not be life span okay there will be a different agent okay then we will see what is the relation between the size and organism basically there is no relation between the size and the life span okay a small organism can have very high life span or very long life span or it also can have very short life span okay so there is no relation with the size and the life span okay for example butterfly is having 1 to 2 weeks crow is having a life span of 15 year and a parrot is having a life span of 160 year as you will see both crow and parrot are having approximately same size the size is approximately same and both of them belongs to class apes that is birds however there is a huge difference between the life span okay so this is irrelevant the size and life span has no relation now type of reproduction we will categorize reproduction on the basis of number of parents involved first of all if a single parent is involved then the reproduction will be asexual okay and this is observed in lower organism lower organism that is prokaryotes and unicellular eukaryotes mainly okay and if it is involving two parents then it is sexual reproduction and this is observed in higher organism like reptiles birds mammals etc okay and the source of variation is high in asexual sorry in sexual reproduction why this is high because the most important difference one thing you must remember is that in asexual reproduction there are only mitotic division are involved but in sexual reproduction both mitosis and meiosis division are involved as the asexual reproduction doesn't involve gamete fusion and zygote formation there are no source of evolution and variation however sexual reproduction involve gamete fusion and zygote formation that is gamete from two different organism is coming and they are fusing that's why it is a source of evolution and also variation okay now come to asexual reproduction in animals so first of all various modes of asexual reproduction we will discuss that is binary fusion binary means two by means two so there will be two organism then multiple fusion in plasmodium okay then budding in yeast juice in chlamydomonas conidia in penicillium 
gemulsion sponges all of this we will see in detail okay now see this see this topic okay see this diagram in a sexual reproduction there is gambule formation gambule formation in sponges there will be gambule formation you can see the diagram there is micropyle there is monoxone spicules spicules are the exoskeleton of sponges fine then you can see the inner membrane you can see the arcuocytes you can also see the outer membrane okay the micropyle have ability to give rise to a whole new organism then you see conidia and penicillium conidia are asexual spores okay they are once they are uh, exposed to suitable condition then they will get proper nutrients and they will form a new organism okay then you see juice spores in chlamydomonas as you can see they are having flagella there are two flagella in juice spores and thus they are motile and there are ch more chances of getting favorable condition as they are motile they can switch their position and they can form new organism okay now come to budding in hydra you can see bud is an outgrowth okay these are the outgrowths the outgrowths gradually increases in size you can see the difference in size between these two okay and once their size is increasing they will attain their maximal size and they will detach from the parent organism so budding in hydra and budding in yeast both are of same phenomenon now various types of fission okay there are irregular in amoeba then longitudinal binary fission in the euglena and transverse binary fission in paramecium okay why this is called irregular because you can see amoeba are irregular organism there is no specific shape and size there is no specific shape that's why this is irregular binary fission and this is observed in amoeba then longitudinal binary fission why this is called longitudinal binary fission because the plane of division you can see this is the plane of division okay this is the plane of division this is longitudinal to the organism and there are two new offspring that's why this is called as longitudinal binary fission this is observed in euglena and now transverse binary fission this is observed in paramecium okay try to remember the example then asexual reproduction in plants asexual reproduction is also called as vegetative reproduction and the structure which give rise to new organism in asexual reproduction in plant this is called as asexual sorry they are called as vegetative propagules okay they are called as vegetative propagules or simply propagules so there are various propagules that is runner in oxalis rhizome in ginger upset in water hyacinth and pistia then leaf buds of bryophyllum you must be familiar with the leaf buds of bryophyllum okay now you see the diagram runner in oxalis oxalis is a this is the runner okay oxalis is a which plant oxalis is a aquatic plant okay and two different oxalis plant are attached to each other through runner that's why they have ability to produce new plants then you see the rhizome in ginger okay this is ginger and see the rhizome okay the rhizome in ginger have have ability to give rise to new plants okay you can see the potato tuber they are also called as eyes of tuber or buds of tu sorry eyes of potato or buds of potato okay they also from that point new plants arises okay so this is also vegetative propagules then you see office upset in pistia or pistia and this is also observed in water hyacinth also that is iconia crassipes in upset also you can see the upset is attaching two different plants okay this is a plant this is a plant it is attaching two different different plant okay that's why this is also vegetative propagule and from that new organism can uh, new plants can be produced okay actually what happens when these plants die for example oxalis or pistia die everything will uh, will face death however the runner and the upset these two part persist that's why they are also called as organ of perination okay they are also called as organ of perination now come to leaf bud of bryophyllum you can see a bryophyllum leaf and from that small leaves are arising okay small small leaf buds are arising and these leaf buds when fall on ground they form a new plant now you see the bulb of onion okay bulb of onion you can see this there is a leaf basis that is fleshy leaf base that is reduced stem adventitious root so this bulb of onion that is this whole onion has ability this is the bulb part has ability to form a new organism okay so all of these things that is runner potato sorry runner tuber buds rhizome offset 
bulb all of these are visibility propagules and you have to remember them along with their examples okay thank you